Okay, so when we look at this one and we get ready to take its derivative, what's the first issue that we're going to have to address? That it's a product. It's a product, okay? It's a product and there's a chain wrapped up in that product. So when we start that derivative, and why do I need the derivative? That's the slope of the tangent line. Good. So we would take first times derivative of the second is where we're going to get a chain rule. So I would take five times my parenthesis raised to the fourth and then times the derivative of my inside, which would be three. Okay. So then the quotient rule says plus second times derivative of the first. So 3x minus 1 to the fifth and derivative of the first would be 6x squared. Now, you could simplify this if you wanted to, but because we're looking for a physical slope, I would just plug in one at this point. I wouldn't worry with the simplification. Uh, I would just plug in the value that it wants me to do just to save myself time. So f prime at one would be two times one to the third times five times three times one minus one all to the fourth times three plus three times one minus one to the fifth times six times one squared. Thank goodness it's a one, right? Alrighty, and then, uh, so that's gonna give me two times five, two to the fourth, 16. And then times three, plus two to the fifth, which will be 32, and then times six, a little bit of multiplication here. Uh, is that 80, 16 times five? And then 32 times six, 192, uh, six times 80, that'd be 480, plus 192, so big numbers. Um, Two, seven, 672 is my slope. Okay, it's big, but it's a number nonetheless. Okay, so what else do I need to write the equation of the tangent line? I need the point, okay? So we know the x value is one. We're gonna plug it back into the original, and that's gonna give me two times one cubed times three times one minus one to the fifth or two times two to the fifth, which is 32 or 64. So my ordered pair is one comma 64. And so then we can finally do what it asked me to, right? The equation of my tangent line, y would equal my slope, x opposite x value, same y. Okay. So just a combination of all the rules together. We're going to find now that it's never just going to be just a product or just a chain rule. Nine times out of ten, we're going to get a combination thereof of all the different things uh, in one problem. All right, which makes it interesting. Okay. All righty. Are you close to being done? Um, somewhere in there. Is it distracting? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right, let's look at your affirmation for today. Be so good they can't ignore you. There you go. Y'all can do it. All right, so today we're going to talk about implicitly defined um, relations and functions. And so in order to kind of do that, we need to talk about the difference between what is something that's explicitly defined and something that's implicitly defined. Something that's explicitly defined is solve for one variable. And that's primarily what you have worked with over the course of your algebraic life. All right, x squared minus 4x plus 7. y equals uh, x plus 2 to the third 
times 5x minus 1, okay? It's solved for one variable, so y is by itself. It also could be something where x was solved by itself. x equals y minus 1 quantity squared, okay? So as long as you have one thing isolated, okay, it is considered explicit, all right? doesn't necessarily mean it's a function, um, but it is explicitly defined, all right? One variable is isolated. So if that is what explicit mean, what means, what do you think implicit means? It's the other way around, all right? So we're not solved for one variable, okay? Multiple variables um, are expressed together. And you've been doing this for a while too. So something like this, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 16. What is that, by the way? It's a circle. Yeah, it's a circle. That's considered an implicit relationship. All right, x and y are defined together. And then we'll go on to see crazy things um, where we couldn't, we might struggle to isolate a variable, maybe something like this, 2x, y cubed, plus the square root of y equals 7x squared y to the fourth, all right? That would be hard to isolate a variable, <laughs> okay? In a circle, we could, all right? But that is an implicit relationship. So as you can imagine, taking a derivative of something where you can't solve for a variable would be a little bit more complicated, okay? And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, so take a look at these two functions. All right. Which of these could be rewritten as a function of x and which could not? All right. So we're just looking at two of these. In other words, could we solve for y in these equations? Okay. That's what we're asking. Can we rewrite these? Because if we can, then that simplifies the process a little. Okay. What about that first one? Could I solve for y? Yes. Yeah, okay. I could solve for y. I'd get y squared equals 25 minus x squared. And then what would we do? Take a square root. Now, it's a complete circle. So when I take a square root, how many equations do I actually get? Two. I get plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. So I want to be sure I get both parts of the circle. So I get the top half and the bottom half because it was a complete circle. And then what about this next one? Can we solve for y? Yeah. Yeah, it's linear. We could solve for y. So we get 2y equals 25 minus 2x, or bless you, y equals 25 over 2 minus x. So yeah, those are both possible, all right, to be rewritten as a function of x, all right? But let's look at some that are a little bit more complicated than those, okay, and determine if we could rewrite those. So let's switch over to the next slide. funny part about yesterday my mom kept looking at me because every nurse that came through was somebody I knew like and she was like how do you know all these people I said well I went to high school with her I taught her kid I taught her like <laughs> I taught him you know he graduated with my brother but it, you know and she was like I can't take you anywhere and I was like you're welcome anyway I said people take better care of you when they know you Okay, so let's look at these. Woo! These are fun. All right. These are fun. Play with these a little bit. Which ones could you solve for y? Could you rewrite them as a function of x? You might have to get creative. Y'all hate that when I say that, don't you?
Are you gonna audition for the acapella group? Uh, he pulled me aside and was like, you need a beatboxer. And he said, I still have to audition, but I basically have to do it. Okay, yay. Yeah, I mean, okay. Good. <laughs> oh, close face. Uh, like no. how one of those circle whistles? <laughs> One of those circle whistles. <laughs> do they even do that anymore? Do they play it electronically? Um, probably <coughs> play it. Are you guys gonna walk around the school and sing? Ooh, you should. You should some caroling. Christmas carol at my house. Uh, oh my. They. God. We will not be ready by Christmas. But he says oh, that next year they will be doing competitions and stuff. Oh, fun! So, right by Christmas, y'all gonna learn three carols. Yeah, we probably could. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. When are, when are the trials? Auditions? Auditions are a week from Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Yeah. I don't know why I said it like that. Tuesday. A week from Tuesday. A week from this Tuesday, so next Tuesday, so. Right? Right. The 30th. You're on something. Because a week from today is Halloween. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. What the heck? Oh, I need to show up today. Imagine. It's, it's my last ever high school football game. Yeah, I'm not going. Like, I think it's a lot. Oh, my gosh, tomorrow will be my last game. We might get to play in the playoffs. If we win, Halloween will be in the playoffs. Play? Come on, keep up a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I might have to skip the Halloween. Let's go trick-or-treat. I don't know. I want to go trick-or-treating, but I didn't know if that would be their last game. Okay, so what do you think? What about the first one? Can we solve for y? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, not bad at all. We get y equals 25 over x. What about the next one across from it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You've got a y and a y cubed. We really can't do anything with that one, all right, to get y by itself. So that's a big fat no. Oh, which Okay. What about the next one? This is tricky. Yes. Okay, well, here's the thing. The issue is I've got a Y inside a cosine, but yet I've got another Y over there. If I didn't have the additional 3Y, what could we do to undo a cosine? An inverse cosine, all right? But because that's a Y over there, that doesn't help me, okay? It doesn't help me. The only way to get something out of a cosine is to use an inverse cosine, and that still would not isolate the Y, okay? So that's not going to help. What about the next one? There has to be a way. We're trying to solve for y. Wait, an xy and a 3y. And a 3y, yep. Factor out a y. Okay, factor out a y because they both, those terms on the left. And so y would equal 12 over x minus 3. Good. Okay. All right, and then that last one. E to the X e, squared. Yeah, we can use a power of E, okay? Remember, we can ex they call that exponentiating each side. What happens if you take E and raise it to an LN? They undo each other. So Y equals E to the X squared minus 3X. So using E, we could get Y out of there, okay, out of the LN. So that could be done, okay? All right, so what I want to talk about today is how do we take derivatives of things that look like these where we can't isolate the y all right because obviously that's going to be an issue um and surely we can take the derivative of a circle all right so that being said we're going to revisit the tangent line problem you've got an investigation here i think there are six questions yep i am correct okay so i want you to take a second all right it gives you a circle and asks you to do some things talking about slopes at certain points work on that with your group for a few minutes and then we'll kind of talk through it and it'll lead us to the process we'll use to be able to take a derivative okay go <coughs> okay parker i need you to participate in this part what? i need you to participate in the investigation part. oh i'm going to okay I'm going. <laughs>
What two picks I got them to lay it down to find the slope of the tangent. That's my best guess. Are we approximate? Oh my god, my stuff is all over the place. Okay. I have a pencil. And that looks like it's either positive one or negative one. Once again, there are two tangents. I look at X equals 4 too, and those would be the same. Uh, Yeah, 3.5 makes sense. If you're taking 
circle. 
Does this agree with your answer for question three? All right. Uh, that is a very <laughs> large skip. That's a good question. That's, um... Okay, what's y equal to numerically? We have, we have two y times y prime. So we have to know what y is and we have to know what y prime is. I, I know. I don't know what I'm trying. Do you have any question for the slope of the line painted at any point on this graph? I mean, circle. Does this agree with your answer question three? Because... So we're just going to find. So I guess we can just do the. You know what? Y squared is equal to. Oh. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Is that, so this is it. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm speaking out loud. Yeah, that's why square is going to be That's the difference. That's the derivative of y. You're plugging y squared in as The derivative of y. Oh, darn it. Give me equations. Okay. Hi-de-ho, I forgot to do that. Hi-de-ho. I love, y'all's conversations are my absolute favorite thing of the day. Especially the math ones. Heidi Ho! I forgot. Only us would understand what was even being said in that moment. Hose come first. Doesn't happen very often. Yep. I need a Christmas shirt that says that. Doing it for the hose. <laughs> Uh, with a derivative on it. That escalated quickly. <laughs> Ooh, that's oh, that's oh, I did. Oh, I did. So we want to. So yeah, we So Okay. So I'm not sure. What else did I do? I did it right. We're right where we're speaking. Right. I didn't see the light. So why did you hold the Okay. Yeah. Oh wait, I don't know. I did the right. Third. 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 Wait, what is her? What? Bro? Three times Three times one minus. So amazing. Three times one minus. So theta, so theta, so gamma. Okay, I can't. It is quite theta. Have y'all seen that Walmart? There's a thing called the Skibbity Toilet. It's actually a toilet. And like you flush it and we're... Yes. It's hysterical. I went there to see the scene that I was looking for. I just walked in. I see Skibbity it's called the skibbity toilet and like there's refills on it so i'm not really even sure what it does it's like in the bathroom no 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 no. it's like you can buy it's in a box what the heck yes how do you know what skibbity toilet is okay because my daughter teaches freshmen and she's like she has had to ban words she has a list of banned words on her board Yeah. She, Becca's banned a bunch. She was like, we have a lot more words in our vocabulary. Let's use them. We are intelligent. This makes us sound unintelligent. Oh, no. I cannot. I my kids engage. No. Honestly, if they would use it less. Yeah, if my three used it Y'all, I love these, but I look like Han Solo exploded when I wear one. That's cute. Those puffer vests, I love them. But every time I try one on, my husband's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, no. I look in the, and I'm like, no. Aww. It wasn't made for me. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. She wears that well. Normal line coming. Can't come as nothing.
Yeah, there are certain things I want to wear, and I put them on, and I'm like, nope, wasn't made for me. It's not for me. Okay, are we ready? Okay, we've done all the things. Well, I, I really feel like we've exhausted this, so we can work through it. Okay. I mean, the, the, it got really good commentary. Okay. All right, here we go. So let's take a look. I just not right now remembered that I'm recording, so Jacob's going to have an interesting lesson to hear. Okay. Yeah. So feel better, Jacob. All right. So it says to write the equation of the circle given. So again, just been a hot minute. All right. You got to square X, square Y, and square the radius. All right. So we get X squared plus Y squared is... 25. So we should have been able to get that part. And then what's the slope of the tangent line to the circle at x equals zero? Well, there's actually two of them. Okay. Um, but what is true about those slopes? There's both zero. Okay. So the slope of the tangent would equal zero. How do we know it's a horizontal line? Okay. Toothpicks. All right, so now we get into the toothpick question. Um, and it says, what's the slope of the line tangent at x equals 3? So when x is 3, how many tangent lines are we actually going to get? Two. We're going to get two. Okay, we get two tangent lines. Um, this is where your toothpicks would help you, apparently. Okay, they're very good straight edges. All right. Um, and so what do you think, just counting, what do you think you're getting? Three, four. three over four. So I would agree. The top one's going to be a negative three over four if we just counted it. And the bottom one would be a positive three over four. So we actually get two tangent lines there. Okay. And two different slopes. And we did, I just counted rise over run. Okay, to do my approximation. Didn't do anything really fancy right there. Okay, uh, but there were two tangent lines. Okay. And what kind of controls that? What our tangent would be, our tangent line slope would be. It's not complicated. So it's where it is. Yeah, it's where it is, like where its x value is, right? So the slope depends on the x and the y coordinate because one x value is not enough, right? Because I actually have how many tangent lines? Two, okay? So the slope depends on both the x and the y coordinate. because there are multiple tangent lines, or there are two tangent lines. So we need to know specifically which tangent line are we talking about. Okay, so if we want to know exactly which one, we'd need the y coordinate to go with it. All right, to know exactly which one we were talking about. All right, so then we get into the good stuff, and we start doing a little calculus. Okay. So it says in algebra, we learned that when we do the same thing to both sides of an equation, the two sides remain equivalent. So it says let y equals 3x um, squared. What does y represent? Again, not a, it, yeah, it's the dependent variable. Okay, it's the dependent variable. It's a function of x. Okay, it's a function of x. And it tells me to take the derivative of both sides of that equation. So we're going to do the derivative of y would be what? Yeah, y prime or dy dx, however you wanted to represent it. Okay, so dy dx. And then the derivative of 3x squared would be 6x. Okay, what does that represent? Yep, it's the slope of the tangent. to the curve at x. Or we could just say it's the derivative of y with respect to x. OK. 
okay? So that's what we've been doing, okay? We've been actually taking the derivative of both sides, derivative of y, y prime, dy dx, however you want to talk about it, because it's equality, all right? And algebraically in an equation, we can do that, okay? So, so can we apply this principle to our tangent line problem, all right? Where we have this function that's not solved for y, okay? And so it says, all right, let's start here. What's going to be the derivative of just x squared? 2x. And what's going to be the derivative of 25? 0. Okay. And can we take derivatives of functions that are being added together and add those derivatives together? Zero. Yeah, we can. Okay. That was one of the first rules we learned. All right. So it says even though y is not by itself, it still represents a function of x. Y is y squared, um, a composite function. Okay. Could we have solved for y in that equation? Sure. Okay. So y is a function of x and it's being squared. Okay. So it's a function of x. So if you want to take the derivative of y squared, we have to treat it like a chain rule. Okay, and so what would be the derivative of something being squared? Two times that something, which is y, times the derivative of that inside. So the derivative of y is d, yeah, y prime or dy dx. Okay, so it's a composition. We're taking something and squaring it. The y is the something, so we kept the y. And then we took the derivative of the inside, which was y, so dy dx. So that's our chain rule right here. Not chair. All right, that's our chain rule. And so now if we take all of those things, those individual derivatives that we just did, and we put it all together, okay, the derivative of that entire equation was 2x plus 2y dy dx equals zero. We took each individual derivative and added it together, which rules of derivatives say we can do. Okay. So that being said, this is giving me the slope of the tangent line at any point. So let's check it and see if it works. Okay. We had the point up at the top three comma four. All right. Let's check it and see if we get what we think we're supposed to get. All right. We said that the slope of the tangent was what at 3, 4? We said it was negative 3 fourths. Okay? So let's solve for dy dx and see if that's true. Let's plug in the x, plug in the y, solve for dy dx and see if we're right. Okay? So if I plug in the x, that gives me 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, and then I've got dy dx equals 0. That's going to give me 6 plus 8 dy dx equals 0. We're trying to solve for dy dx. So I get 8 dy dx is equal to negative 6. I divide by 8. dy dx is negative 3 fourths. Booyah. Okay. So we were right. Okay. So let's talk about what we did right there, where we took those individual derivatives, we treated y like a chain rule, right, to get me a formula for a derivative, okay? We took individual derivatives and we added them together, and then we were able to get that derivative without solving for y, taking square root and doing it like we normally did, okay? That that you just did right there is implicit differentiation, okay? And so let's just kind of put it all together into some logical procedures that I think are going to help, okay? When we want to do implicit differentiation, we treat every y as a chain rule, okay? That's the number one thing. We're going to treat every y as a chain rule, which means we're going to multiply every y derivative by the derivative of y, 
which sounds weird and redundant, okay? So this is what I tell people to do stepwise. Let's differentiate with respect to x. Okay, everything, both sides of the equation. We're going to apply the chain rule. To all y terms. Which basically means we're going to multiply by dy dx for every y term. Okay, that's what that means. And then we collect all our dy dx terms on one side. Factor and solve. Okay. That is the process for implicit differentiation, right? It's different, it's weird. It's the one thing that when people go to school, college, and they're in Calc 2, and they text me and they're like, I can't remember how to do this problem. It's almost always implicit differentiation, <laughs> okay? So I'm like, it's implicit. And then once I go back through it once, they're like, oh yeah, 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 I remember, okay? So that's one of your graduation gifts. You get my phone number so you can text me if you need me, okay? To ask me a math question. Just know I go to bed at 8.30. Okay, so if it's due at midnight, you got to text me before 8.30. Okay, all right. <coughs> Just saying, okay? Just being honest. You can't wait till 11.30 and think you're going to get an answer. All right. Or a video response, because sometimes I do a video response. Okay, and if you're going to pimp me out to your, clap to your like, roommates... I get a fee if you charge a fee, okay? All right, because I had a kid, God love him, he was at Harding, and I'll never forget, he said, Ms. Moore, my roommate needs help, and you're the only person I know that could help. And I'm like, oh my God, are y'all in jail? Like, what is going on? And he goes, he's in, he's in pre-cal, and I told him you were the best. Da -da 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 -da. Well, then come to find out, when Heifer comes home for fall break, he's like, yeah, I've been charging him to tutor him. I said, where is my share? Because I feel like I'm in a relationship with your roommate at this point. <laughs> bliss. Okay, here we go. So let's do some. We're going to start simple and then we'll get, you know, the drill. Okay. All right, rock and roll. Too far. So let's start here. Okay. So find dy dx when y squared is equal to x. Okay. So let's just walk through it a piece at a time. We're going to take the derivative of everything. If I have a y term, I tag a dy dx on it because it's the chain rule. Okay. So what would be the derivative of y squared? 2y. And we're going to keep a dy dx. And what's the derivative of x? 1. We want to get dy dx by itself. So what would I do? Divide by 2y and you're done. Okay. It's the chain rule. So like that's say this is like looking at y squared like this. Okay, we don't write that parenthesis. So right dy dx. Yep. Yep. All right, let's do another one. Okay. Again, start simple and then we'll get to the good stuff. Okay. So let's do each individual term. Okay. Derivative of 3y. 3y squared, it's a y term, so it's a chain. Tack on a dy dx. Okay. Derivative of y squared. 2y, it's a chain, dy dx. Derivative of negative 5y. Negative 5 dy dx. Derivative of negative x squared. Minus 2x. Now, why do I not have to put dx dx? Because it's, it's redundant, right? It's just one. It wouldn't be necessary anyway. Okay? <laughs> All right. And then derivative of 4. 
Zero. Biggest mistake I see people making these. Derivative of a constant, they'll put the constant back down. Okay, derivative of a constant is always zero. Okay, all right, so we want to collect our dy dx terms together and move everything else to the other side. Okay, so who's going to uh, witness relocation program? Who's moving over? The 2x, so we know it's going to equal 2x. All the other terms have a dy dx, so we're going to have 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 and my dy dx. And then if we want to keep dy dx by itself, we're going to divide by all that. Okay, so implicit functions require an x and a y typically to find their tangent slope. Okay, so that's why you're going to have x's and y's together when you get the derivative. Okay. <laughs> Solomon. All right, here we go. Okay. Number eight is where we get to the good stuff. Okay. Okay. Number eight's the good stuff, okay? So let's just kind of talk through it, all right? You're going to get to do some on your own here in just one second, but let's look at this one, okay? So find dy dx when x squared times y plus 3x times y cubed minus x equals 3. That's definitely implicit, okay? What do you notice about this first term? It's a product rule, okay? It's a product rule. Okay, so let's do a product rule on just those first two terms, okay? So I'm going to do every one in color so you can see what I'm doing for each piece, okay? All right, so for this first one, first times derivative of the second, what would be the derivative of y? Just dy dx plus second times derivative of the first. 2x, okay? So that's my first term's derivative. It's a product, okay? All right, let's go to the second one, All right? Here we go. Because there's a plus right there, I'm going to say plus, <laughs> okay? So it too is a product, a 3x and a y cubed. So first, times derivative of the second, derivative of y cubed, y dy dx, plus second times derivative of the first. Derivative of 3x would be 3, okay? Next term, derivative of negative x. Negative 1 equals derivative of 3, which would be zettel. Okay. Woo! That's painful. The hard part? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's just kind of, I'm going to organize a little bit better because there's a lot of mess going on, okay? So I've got an x squared dy dx plus a 2xy, all right? Plus this next one, I've got a 9xy squared dy dx plus 3y cubed minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so I just combined everything so I don't miss anything, all right? Everything that doesn't have a dy dx goes to the other side. Everything that does gets grouped and factored, okay? So to the other side, I'm going to have a 1 minus a 2xy minus a 3y cubed, okay? So I moved all of those. Everything changed signs. On the other side, I'm going to have an x squared plus a 9xy squared, both multiplied by dy dx. Okay. And finally, my derivative is this nice, nasty, okay, 1 minus 2xy minus 3y cubed over x squared plus 9xy squared. Now, I know y'all don't want to hear this, but we're going to learn how to do second derivatives of implicitly divine functions, and they are righteous. All right, so. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. All right. How about it? Say it ain't so. Who are we pulling for in the World Series, by the way? You don't know? I'm pulling for the Dodgers. The Dodgers and the Yankees. No. Well, the Dodgers used to be in Brooklyn, but now they're in Los Angeles. And then the Yankees are in New York. I'll go for probably the Yankees. Okay. You broke it. When did, when did that, did it, like, solidified? Um, I think it was Sunday. I think it was Sunday. But it starts Friday night. <laughs> so. so some of us wanted to set up a tent with a TV on it so we could watch it at the game while we're at the game. Yeah, but anyway. Okay. So let's do a few more. Okay. Because every function we've ever done can show up as a part of this. Okay. What? Yeah. Yeah, it can. All right. Well, let's look at this one. What? Okay. Because, again, the calculus is not terrible. The algebra is brutal. Okay. Right? Algebra. That's why we call it that. Okay. Calculus and algebra. Oh. You did not spend all that time and then throw that away. I get it. Well, you know, I destroyed it. I accidentally. Okay. All right. So here we go. That's really funny. <laughs> I know. It's true. Oh, you get it now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. So we're looking for a derivative. What would you do first? Uh, Chain rule. Two. Chain rule. Okay. So two times three is going to give me six times, oh, didn't mean to do that. Stop it. I know. Oh, I turned the camera on. I was like, what's happening? Okay. Okay. All right. So six times X squared plus Y squared is going to go to the first times the derivative of the inside stuff. So the derivative of that is going to be 2x plus 2y dy dx. And it's going to equal the derivative of 100, which is 0. Okay? All right. Now, the simplification on this. Tough. All right? It's a little bit tougher. Okay? The first thing I notice is that I have a coefficient there. And everything is multiplied together, which is nice. Okay, but because so many things are multiplied together, I have to be really careful in my simplification, all right? Because mm, more things have a dy dx than we know, all right? So, that being said, this constant, I'm going to divide first, okay? So, I have x squared plus y squared times 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0, okay? Okay? Why would I not want to divide by x squared plus y squared? Yeah, well, and because it just make everything go to zero, <laughs> all right, which is not what's going to happen here, okay? This is like FOIL. This is like taking x plus 2 times x minus 7, okay? But we've just got x's and y's and dy dx's and all the things, right? It is too late. <laughs> it is too late, darling. All right, so here we go. Okay, we need to distribute, okay, hang with me. So 2x cubed plus 2x squared y dy dx, all right? So to actually get all of our dy dx terms, we have to multiply it out, all right? <laughs> then distribute your y squared. Do you see why we're taking two days? <laughs> yeah, do you see why we're taking two days on this one now? Yeah. So 2xy squared <laughs> plus 2y cubed dy dx equals zero. Like I said, it's a good thing. I love y'all. All right. It's really not that bad. It's just foil. Oh, okay. That's only one unit better than I thought. 
All right, hang with me. Don't, hey, live today, okay? Participate, don't anticipate. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. So there's just so many X's and Y's. All right. It's really not that bad. It's foil. Okay. I move all the things that don't have a dy dx. I collect those that do and I factor, okay? And so we land on, I'm gonna put this over here because I just ran out of space, dy dx equals negative two x cubed minus two xy squared over two x squared y plus two y cubed, all right? Is there anything you notice about every term in that answer? We can take out a two, okay? We can take out a two. Now, I want to kind of show you one of the things that they'll do in simplification. Everything's got a two. So it's like if I pulled a negative two out of the top, that would leave me with x cubed plus xy squared. On the bottom, if I pull out a two, it leaves me with x squared y plus y cubed, okay? Don't get in the habit, all right, of just crossing things out from numerator to denominator. You really need to factor, Okay, because you'll get so, I call it slash happy. You go kung fu fighting and you just start, right? You just start crossing stuff out because it looks good. All right, so no, all right? Factor out what's common so that you can really see it. Now, there's an X that's common on the top. There's a Y that's common on the bottom, but they're not gonna simplify each other or leave me anything else that would simplify. So just simplify the constant. So in doing that, you will often see this written as equals, and they'll put the negative out to the side, and I'm not really sure why they do that, but they do, over x squared y plus y cubed. If you leave it on the top, I will still count it correct, okay? So don't feel like you have to do that, but just know in a multiple choice, they might do that. What if it goes to the top, it goes to the bottom? <laughs> yeah. Today yeah. marks the day that you ran out of space. I know, on a problem. Oh bad. <laughs> 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 All right, that was a lot. Okay. It's not even hard. It's just like it's just nasty. Yeah. Or tedious is the word I like to use. That's a great word. It's tedious. Yeah, it's just tedious, and you have to really pay attention and watch what you're doing. Okay. All right. So let's look at a couple of more that aren't as bad. Okay, so I just wanted to throw a couple at you that, you know, look a little different so you can play with it a little. Okay. All right. Are you going to need to practice this before your quiz on Monday? Yes, you are. <laughs> it's all, you got it. Solid. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor, though. I'm probably going to be evaluated in the next week or so. I don't know who it'll be, but, you know, lock in. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. We'll lock in regardless. Jawak. Jawak. All right, let's, let's try this one. Okay, you all try to do the derivative. Okay, and then we'll come back and do the evaluation together. Okay? Y'all okay. try the derivative on this one. It's, a, it's in my head already. Oh, that's just find the derivative. Yeah. So it's what are we doing up top? Same thing. Okay, but I want you to do this one. Oh. Okay. Pi over four. Oh, gosh, please. Negative pi over four. Okay. I have no red. So what I'm gonna do is probably over high red so you don't have to have time. I got set back, I didn't have lead, so it's okay. We actually need a five minute extension. Oh yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, are we ready? No, 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 very, very much. Not ready. Okay, so I'm going to leave it right there for a second. Okay. Did we get that? If we got that, then we're halfway there. Okay. Now, here's the tricky part. Okay, when we get ready to plug in to find the value, they tell me that the y value is negative pi over 4. Okay. But in order to evaluate the derivative, not only do I need y, I also need x. Okay. So where are we going to go to get that x value? The original expression, okay? So we're going to take the tangent at negative pi over 4 plus x cubed plus 9 equals 0 because I need an x and a y to be able to plug into the derivative formula, okay? Now, negative pi over 4 is down here in the fourth quadrant. Nice thing about pi over 4 Square root of 2 over square root of 2, right? So if I'm doing tangent, sine over cosine, what's it going to give me? Yeah. Negative 1. Oh, yeah. Okay. So negative 1 plus x cubed plus 9 equals 0. Or x cubed plus 8 equals 0. Or x cubed equals negative 8. Or x is what? Negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, so you had to find the x and the y. Well, you can take a root of a negative. You can take a square root of a negative. Oh. But a cube root, you can. Okay, now we've got what we need to evaluate the derivative. So let's finish it up. So dy dx is going to equal negative 3 times negative 2 squared over the secant at negative pi over 4. And we're going to square that too. Okay. All right, a little nasty arithmetic. Negative 3 times 4 would give me a negative 12. All right. Secant at negative pi over 4. Secant is the reciprocal of who? Cosine. Cosine. Cosine in the fourth quadrant would be positive, so I just want to flip that. So I've got ooh, 2 over the square root of 2, and we're going to square it. Okay? All right, so that's going to give me negative 12 over... 4 divided by 2, or negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. Okay, woo! That's good stuff right there. When I get to the end and the right answer's on the page for a problem like that, I'm like, yes. When it's not, no. <laughs> okay? All right, try the one underneath it. I think you can do that one all on your own. I gave you the whole word pair this time. Go. Oh my gosh. Okay. This
because it's fun. It kind of is. I'm the person that loves this stuff. Sorry, Samuel. Like there's some biblical wailing and gnashing of teeth. I'm sweating pretty close. <laughs> You're pretty close. The rest. That's not good. Oh, the slope. That's not good. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Did the, I did the you did the entire equation. Yeah, it just wanted the slope. <laughs> Okay. What questions do you have? Oh, so if it asks for the slope of the tangent, it's always derivative. Well, yeah, that part, but. Okay. Why do you keep going after that? Because it said to find it at the point two negative one. So I needed a numerical value. Yeah. So if it gives me a point or if it gives me an X or it gives me a Y, then I've got to plug it in and get the actual derivative. So what's the rest that Parker did? He um, wrote the equation of the tangent line. We're going to do one like that in just a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he went above and beyond. Oops. It's all good, though. Okay. All right, let's do... No, let's do one more. <laughs> Or maybe two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. Okay. Let's look at 13. Okay. Okay. So this time we're going to go as far as Parker wanted to go this time. He wanted to actually write equations. I didn't want to do that. You didn't? Thank you, Parker. Okay. Oh, my God. Normal? It's just a negative. Normal? Yeah. Normal? Yeah. All right, let's go, let's go. So we got time to get through everything. Okay, sorry, but would derivative of x, y be x, dy dx, or x times 1 times y times 1? I would keep the negative 1 with the x, because it's a product rule. It's a product, because you got two different functions there. you got an x and a y. Yeah, but you do. First, so negative 1x dy dx plus y times negative 1.
two numbers in this entire oh. thing. Oh. Okay, if your signs are all opposite of what mine are, you're still correct. Oh, what the freeze. Okay. Because I like to keep a positive term in the front. Okay. All right. And I like to keep the negative coefficient with the X term when I do a product. Okay. So you. Yeah. And if you factor out a negative, that you should still get the same thing. Okay. She just said if it's the opposite sign, it's still correct. Okay, then. Two. Two. Ooh. What was that? <laughs> Sounds like Halloween came early. Now, once you get your slope, you plug in the point. Okay, gives you your slope for your tangent. Your normal is just opposite reciprocal because they're perpendicular. So you only have to get one slope to get the second. Now, these will appear two places, all right, on your AP exam, multiple choice, typically in the non calculator section, and they're usually not terrible, okay? We're not going to do number 14, but 14 is how it will show up on free response. It will say verify. So it will tell you the answer. You just have to show all the work to get there. And your work has to be accurate. How do you, know you can't fiddle fart through it. <laughs> you do this chapter when there's a lot, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot, you just do both. Normal. Oh. Yep. Okay. All right. Let me give you your assignment. We do have a wrap up today. You're going to need to practice this. All right. You're going to need to before your quiz on Monday. We're going to use what we learned today for the lesson tomorrow, but it's much shorter, okay? So if you do some practice tonight, we can take time tomorrow to work through some questions you have, okay, before we do that little add-on piece tomorrow, okay? I think tomorrow's lesson's only like four pages, like it's short, okay? All right, so here we go, lesson practice. 
It is on page 175, 177. Like I said, it's the algebra that's going to get you. 1, 3, 7, 11, 13, 17, 21, 23, 25, 57. Okay, there's 10 of them. Okay, pick and choose a few. All right, go through there and be like, oh, that one looks nasty. Let me try that one. Okay, and if you've done a nat, you can't get a nasty one, go back and do a simple one to make sure you can get the simple one. All right, then go back to a nasty. All right, do your wrap up. All right, get that point for me today. It is multiple choice. Okay. I'll take a guarantee. I'll take a rabbit.